Um, so my article was based in Lebanon. Uh, that's my area of expertise in terms of research expertise. Um, and I have to say a lot has changed since I wrote the article till now. Um, last week, well, 12 days ago, there was a huge explosion in Beirut. Um, before that, October 17th, uh, 2019 to now, there's a series of protests that have been occurring. So I think the narrative has really changed. When I wrote the article, um, there was quite a focus on sexual harassment and accountability for that. Um, it was also kind of uh, post Me Too movement. So there was a debate around whether the Me Too movement actually helped the Lebanese movement or not. Uh, but now I think the, the conversation has really changed to wider accountability. So a wider regime change, uh, a wi wider system change. Um, so I think the largest impediment, honestly, to, to any sort of accountability at this point, including sexual harassment or gender-based violence, is definitely the lack of a functioning state. I mean, at this point, there is no functioning state. There is no functioning economy. Um, and as we know, like women that are disadvantaged already or vulnerable already, this further marginalizes them. So I would say, like, if I had to pick one, it's a very wide, <laughs> wide one, but it would be the lack of a functioning state. And I think the struggle is, is currently ongoing to a rebuild Beirut, which is a massive, I mean, it's going to take years and years to rebuild Beirut, uh, but also uh, to work towards some kind of uh, social change. Um, within that, there are feminist demands. I mean, the, the revolution has feminist demands as well, and sexual harassment is one of them. Uh, but of course, there's a larger kind of point to be made for a more equitable society, and that would then mean a more equitable society for women as well. So I think the pandemic, um, so the pandemic happened and there was uh, an increase in, in gender-based violence all over the world. I mean, there was an increase in domestic violence in Lebanon. There was an increase uh, in the amount of calls that the police got on the helpline, which is for domestic violence. Um, I'm not sure what, the, the data is not disaggregated by sexual harassment or other kind of gender-based violence. Um, but we do know that there was an increase. There was also a problem with the amount of spaces in shelters because shelters weren't taking more people because of COVID, etc. Uh, so there definitely was that problem. But I think um, in terms of collective action, as I said already, I mean, the the revolution started October 17th and is ongoing now. So the collective action kind of has, the narrative has shifted onto a more broader kind of point. Um, but within that, I would say women have been at the forefront of the revolution. They've been at the forefront of the protest there. I mean, and every kind of, in terms of like vocalizing uh, the demands of the protest, in terms of writing about it, in terms of art, culture, in terms of on the streets, uh, women are everywhere. And so I think it's really highlighted that the public space is very much for women and can be claimed by women. Um, and I think it's really, it's really highlighted that I think that there really haven't been any accounts of sexual harassment from October 17th till now. So in a sense, uh, it's actually equalize the space between men and women, especially during the protest. So this is not to say that sexual harassment doesn't exist. Of course it exists, it exists every day. But at least in the protest, we've seen that there is the possibility of having an equal space for men, men and women in Lebanon, where sexual harassment is not the norm, rather it may be the exception. So in a sense, it's brought hope, at least to me, like personally as a scholar, I feel that women in the protest and therefore like, being equal citizens has very much been a kind of central point of the protest. So I think it's that's hopeful. And with that then comes progress in terms of gender-based violence, sexual harassment, and other kind of equitable laws. I think the first thing is we have to take sexual harassment seriously. I mean, I, I think that's the first point. I think it has to be more widely recognized. Um, I think all gender-based violence is, is extremely important, but in a sense, sexual harassment is normalized so often in popular culture that I hope that somebody reading this would understand that this sort of thing happens everywhere and it's not okay. It's just not okay. Um, 
And also, I think specifically for my article, I would hope that it highlights what migrant domestic workers in Lebanon go through, where there is really no hope of accountability because they really don't have equal rights to a Lebanese citizen or other resident living here. Um, so I think that's something that I would really like to highlight because the pandemic has highlighted and the economic crisis has highlighted that migrant domestic workers are much, much worse off now than they were when I wrote the article. And they were already... Uh, in, a, in an extremely disadvantaged position in society and now they're much worse off. So I think it's uh, that's something I would like to highlight that there needs to be more of a public conversation around migrant domestic workers. There already is. It's been prompted by the economic crisis and by uh, the protests as well. But definitely there needs to be not just a reform of the system for migrant domestic workers, not just a reform of the kafala system but instead like an overhaul a complete overhaul of the kafala system where if you come to lebanon as a migrant domestic worker you should have equal rights to anyone else working here so the labor laws should apply to you and they don't at this point and therefore then that leads to accountability uh, in many ways including against harassment so i mean i think i would hope that this would highlight, my article would highlight that point. And of course, the wider point being the importance of focusing on sexual harassment in scholarly pursuits, in legal pursuits, in, in social change, et cetera.